Tech Tips. Hey guys, back again with Tech Tips. This is Johnny Too Much. We're going to talk about one of my favorite subjects today, different concealment options. Now, first things first, before we start getting into these, I want to make something clear. Concealment is just that. It is hiding your gun and your means of self-defense from everybody else you're around. You don't want to make a spectacle of yourself. You don't want to be this guy. Let's go round at the masses motherfuckers right now. Murka. So you don't want to look like a soldier or the Punisher. You want to look more like a ninja, hiding in the shadows just like everybody else, nice and non-noticeable. The second you start attracting attention to yourself, when shit hits the fan, you're one of the first people they're going to look at. You don't want that. You want to surprise your bad guy. Here's another thing to think about. In this wardrobe right here, this simple t-shirt, I'm going to have to carry my gun on me 6, 10, maybe 13 or 14 hours a day. I better make sure that sucker's comfortable. If I got the big ankle holster with a Smith & Wesson 500 Magnum on my hip, it's not going to look too unnoticeable when I'm walking down the street. Right? And if I got the big gangly shoulder holster and I have to walk like Superman all day, you're probably going to notice it. The idea is to look like everybody else, but have an advantage over anybody who tries to do you harm. Now let's get into concealment options, shall we? So if you've been in the game for a while, I'm going to tell you something you already found out over the past couple of years. But if you're new to this, let me tell you something about concealed carry. I know it's exciting, and I know it's great to know you have that ability to defend yourself in any means possible. So you're going to carry the biggest, baddest gun you could think of, your full-size Glock and your spare mags. After a while, that gets heavy, so you just carry the full-size Glock. Eventually, it gets so big and so cumbersome on your hip that you decide to buy a smaller pistol, and then your Glock becomes your house gun. With that being said, and keeping that in mind, let's go from large to small on our concealment options. Let's start off first with a shoulder holster. It can be easily concealed by wearing something like this jacket, right? Walk all around, no one really notices that you got a full size, well in this case, the compact Glock 23 on you, and two spare magazines. Now this is a great wardrobe to wear during any school shooting or apocalypse. Right now, in Ohio, where we are, it's May. It's starting to get really hot. So I don't want to wear this jacket, because I'm going to be the only one in the supermarket sweating my ass off, right? I've got to take off my jacket. Where does that leave my gun? Where everybody else can see it. So this option, I would usually reserve for when I'm wearing heavier clothing, and I'm going to be outdoors a long time. Because once you go inside with a heavy burly coat on, well, that mall gets kind of hot. As far as deployment, it's still pretty fast considering. Why don't I show you? Another great and very popular option is outside the waistband. Outside the waistband being that holster is outside of your jeans and fully exposed to anybody who wants to see it. A great way to conceal it, just take that jacket again and slide it over. The downside of this, again, you're going to have to leave this jacket on all day. Now, in my state and a lot of other states in our, our great union here, open carry is actually legal. I can go into a store just like this and legally I shouldn't have a problem. Legally isn't the problem. Socially is. Socially, it's not too acceptable for a kid wearing a 1985 memorabilia t-shirt to be carrying a Glock 23 in the mall. You're going to look like a threat. And people who aren't used to guns or might be afraid of guns are going to see you as a problem. You don't want to be a problem when you're carrying concealed. If you're not an asset, you're a liability. Don't be a liability, especially after watching a few episodes of Tactics, all right? Now, the great pros of this carry option is that it's very comfortable. I can carry this for 12, 13 hours. It's very easy to get that out and get it on target. And I don't have to worry about something banging around on my ankle or shoving up into my armpit all day. The other bad side about this particular holster right here, this is a Serpa Blackhawk holster, and it has a safety release button. Now, this retention button makes sure that no one else can get my gun out. But unless you train with this, you're not going to get your gun out. You're going to be sitting here doing this while you're getting perforated. You have to train to push that button under stress, and I mean under stress, to be able to access your weapon quickly. If not, you're going to be sitting there poking around, or you're going to screw up pushing this release button and rip around 
Notice my finger on the trigger now, right into your leg. And I certainly don't want you text Grabner in yourself. I just fucking shot myself! Oh, son of a bitch! I just shot my... Now to one of my favorite concealed carry options, inside the waistband. What that means is your holster is actually seated inside the waist of your jeans or slacks right here. Now the only thing you can see is the top half of the gun, the handle and the trigger guard, um, and the back sights, but everything else is concealed inside your jeans where no one can see it. And what I like about this option is that even in plain clothes, so I'm just wearing a t-shirt and jeans, I can wear a t-shirt and shorts, and you can hardly see this gun even in light clothing like this. Also, the other advantage of this carry option is that its accessibility is very quick. It's very easy. I don't have to struggle through clothing or worry about extra snaps or anything. This is a DeSantis inside the waistband holster for the Smith & Wesson shield. Again, this shield is empty. Safety first and second and three to five are fun. Um, this is another one of those great concealed carry options. It's an oscillated stack 9mm. Uh, the slide's easy to use. Uh, it's a great beginner gun. 9mm um, is easily controllable if you're male or female. And the size is so thin that even on a female frame, you know, we always like that hourglass figure, and I know you ladies like to strive for that, um, you can still hide this even on a curvy figure. I know I'm not a curvy figure, but you can hide it very easily in just a plain t-shirt. And of course, like I said, the accessibility is great. Let me show you. Now speaking of inside the waistband, there's another good, very popular carry option inside the waistband a lot of people use, that's the appendix carry. Now notice, on me, my appendix is over here, but I'm left-handed. I'm never right. So I'm opposite my appendix, right in front of me, at maybe the 11 or 10 o'clock position. Um, what that is good for is if you're driving long distances on the road. Now I'm an actor and a stuntman when I'm not doing these videos, so I have to drive anywhere between one and five hours to get to some of the locations I have to get to. And this is a great option. You don't have a big or even a small gun digging into the side of your hip for five, six hours on the road. It's right here where your legs naturally crease so you don't have any obstruction while you're driving. Plus, even in this option, it's a pretty accessible feel. I can get to this gun in less than a second if I really need to get that gun out there and get to business. Again, this is an unloaded gun. Safety first and second, three to five are fun. I don't want to blow my cameraman or my camera away. He's going to be pissed at me either way. So um, rather than rip a few rounds in this room right here, why don't we take it to the range? Another popular carry option, especially for what people call backup weapons, you know, a smaller weapon to complement the bigger one on your hip, is ankle carry. Ankle carry is another good option, especially, like I said earlier, in on driving, right? I have to be on the road five, six hours. I don't want something at my seven o'clock just digging into me all day. Well, with the gun on the ankle, there's nothing obstructing it. There's nothing shoving into it. There's nothing... Um, compromising the comfortability of your gun while you're driving long distances or even while you're walking around. Um, some of the holsters I carry, after about a half hour, I forget they're there. Like this one. This is one of the lower end ones. I kind of notice this is on me every once in a while. This is a Renegade holster, and this is for my Glock 27 or 26. Um, again, that's, that's 10 rounds of 40 caliber in my ankle. That's a pretty big gun to be carrying in such an uh, abstract carry option, but uh, a lot of police officers carry a backup gun um, when they're on duty. They don't just carry their primary weapon. And the great thing about the mini Glock is if you're carrying a full-size Glock, you could actually use your replacement magazines in the smaller gun. 
A lot of law enforcement officers use this option so that their backup gun and their primary weapon have the same ammo capabilities. Right? But it doesn't limit your carry options to smaller guns. Now on my other ankle right here, you'll notice I'm going to put this one down. I have an Elisi holster with a full-on Glock 23. Now this is 14 rounds of 40 caliber, 13 plus 1, on an ankle. This is usually the gun I carry primarily on my hip because it's so heavy and cumbersome. But with this Elisi holster, now Elisi, they're a little more expensive. This one cost me about 130 bucks. But you know what they say, good and cheap and cheap ain't good. I can carry this huge gun on me all day and I don't even notice it. Again, one of the cons of ankle carry is it's kind of more cumbersome to get to under stress. This is one of those options where you probably want to find cover or concealment first before you deploy your weapon. But let me show you how that works. Just a couple more options before we close up here, guys. Uh, pocket carry and abstract carry. Pocket carry um, obviously is in your pockets, right? The great advantage of pocket carry is a lot of time with a smaller pistol. I'm going to go ahead and show you my good side. You don't even notice. It kind of looks like a wallet. But in my back pocket is actually a high standard Derringer. Um, again, I'm loaded. We don't use loaded guns in the house here. Wife don't like it too much. Uh, but this one is actually shaped. So that when you put it in your back pocket, it's the outline of a wallet. The disadvantage of this particular gun, this high standard Derringer right here, now they stopped making these a while ago, but there's only two rounds of 22 Magnum. Right? Doesn't limit your options, however, because in my other back pocket, where I normally carry this gun that I carry all the time, this is an LWSC camp in my back right pocket. Now this holster is a custom holster made by Mickey Yurko from Yurko Custom Knives. Um, the swoop on the end here, this little crenellation there, when I put the gun in and I put it in my back pocket, you'll notice when I draw, that hook grabs my pocket so I can bring the gun out unobstructed. Now, I know I, know, I mentioned earlier I'm left-handed, right? There's a disadvantage of this carry, because what's in my back left pocket if I'm left-handed? My actual wallet, yeah? Now, most people are right-handed, so the advantage for me is that when I... I'm up in the surrender position, and I say, okay, I just went to the ATM, I got hundreds of bucks right here, I come up with a gun, not my wallet. And this is a perfectly acceptable place to store a wallet, so they're never going to be suspicious until, of course, they have to smile and wait for the flash. All right, whoa, whoa, easy, man, easy. Look, I just went to the ATM, it's fine, man, it's fine. It's... ATM, I got 200 bucks, you can have it, I don't care, that's fine. Now, sometimes you don't want to carry uh, in your pocket because you have a lot of things in your pockets. If you're like me, my jeans are like utility belts. They have a bunch of stuff in them, and it's always where it needs to go, uh, right where it needs to be. But if you don't want to carry in your pocket and you do have a smaller frame pistol, here's one option that I really found interesting. In fact, my father, uh, the one we call Pops on this channel, he's a retired sergeant from the Sheriff's Department in our local county, and uh, he used to carry this when he worked undercover. That way, even if he was just buying drugs in a, uh, a buy situation, he still had a gun on him, even though he was supposed to look or appear unarmed. And that's right here. This is a North American Arms mini revolver on a necklace. Now this necklace has a bore brush that goes right into the barrel of this gun. And now this is a small gun. I could hide it right here. You wouldn't even know I had the gun on me. It's very small, but even this small package, this North American Arms mini revolver, holds five rounds of 22. The disadvantage of this carry is you're going to have to use that board brush to go all the way through the cylinder, so you're losing a round. You just went to four rounds of 22. However, if nothing else is permissible, this is a great carry option to have a gun when you don't have a gun. That's the mouse gun contingency. But even though it's got a small package, it really rips a big bang. Let me show you. Bunch of different concealment options for you. Take your favorite one and go ahead and use it, but please, if you're gonna carry, please carry responsibly and please train at least once a month. I myself like to go at least twice a month. As always, I'm Johnny Too Much. Stay safe out there, will you?